welcome to the program. Joining me now, Scott Hamilton, CEO of the Urban League of the State of Arkansas, Sherman Tate. Diversified group of qualifications, but he is the chairman of the Urban League of the State of Arkansas. Sherman and Scott, thank you both for being here very much. Thanks, thank you. The Urban League is a multiracial organization, a broad coalition of different people from different backgrounds coming together, working across the state of Arkansas and some of the things that I mentioned in the intro here. Um, Sherman, I want to recognize you for some civil rights activity first and foremost. Okay. A lot of people don't know this about you, and I want you to tell the story briefly. Yeah. You actually were a protester and sat in at the cafeteria in the state capitol when you were at Philander Smith College and changed the way that the course of history went on that. True? True. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was part of a group of students from Philander Smith College that came to the capitol uh, and uh, only to get as close as the bottom of the stairs and the state police stopped us. And uh, but we went back the second day and we got in and had a meal. So persistence paid off. <laughs> <laughs> I want people to understand that you are a pioneer in civil rights in Arkansas. I appreciate you doing what took a lot of courage back in that day to make that happen. So the state's better off for your activism at that time. So well, thank you. Thank you. And your continued activism. Scott, when you work with a, you know, a legend like this, That's I mean, right. that <laughs> it just kind of puts you in your place, doesn't it? I mean, what, what's your take on Sherman's courage in that face of adversity? Yeah, Roby, I, it, it's actually an honor and pleasure uh, to be able to work day to day with, with someone of uh, the uh, caliber of uh, Sherman Tate. Uh, known him pretty much all my life, and I learned the why that in 2024 that we still have certain things that we need to do as a society. And so learning from, hearing about his experiences, uh, it gives me the fuel, it gives me the fire, it gives me the ability, it gives me the drive to do the kind of work that we do at the Urban League every day. Let me stay with you on this because education's a big component, something you guys have been working a lot on. The LEARNS Act has right. gone into effect now. We're, yes. we're seeing how it plays out in so many different roles and capacities. Scott, give me a little bit of your assessment of where you think it is benefiting and right. where you think perhaps some improvements need to be made. Great, yeah. We read all 145 pages actually twice. And uh, quite frankly, there's some very good things in the LEARNS Act. I mean, third grade literacy. I mean, a third grader should be able to read it third grade level, right? Uh, the, 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 the community service hours. We believe that that's a good thing for a student to, you know, work in their community, get to know, do things that are important to their communities. That gives them the type of experience and engagement I think that they need to be successful. Um, the career track development. I mean, again, to identify what do I want to do when I graduate? So these are all areas, Roby, that we're trying at the Urban League going around the state talking to superintendents we've had some conversations uh, with some folks from the Department of Education of how can the Urban League be helpful to make sure all kids in the state are aware of these requirements if their parents are aware and if there are things that we can do to help to make sure those things happen happen um, you know there's some concerns I think it was it was a lot that was put out there quickly right now education is a big big challenge and so uh, it's like eating an elephant, man. You just got to take a bite of this thing. <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, there's a lot out there. And so a little bit of our concerns, making sure that, again, students, parents, school districts are very aware of some of the requirements and finding ways to make sure the students are able to, uh, to, to meet the requirements. One of the first school districts to get um, some benefit, some would argue, some harm, some sure. others would argue, was the Marvel School District. Uh, Anybody in this room at this table from maybe Marvel, Arkansas has some connections to Marvel, Arkansas? Uh, no, no. Oh, you do? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> Anyhow, what's your, what's your take on the LEARNS Act and how it has helped and hurt? Well, I, I think Scott was on target, and, and I think put the, there's potential based on the LEARNS Act that will, if, if followed, and, and it, it will benefit the community black and white. What we have to continue to do is what Scott was mentioning in terms of working with people, educating them about what's going on mm -hmm. and what is going to happen if we do certain things versus what will happen if we don't do certain things. Right. And one of the things that I've discovered uh, is the need to visit more, and Scott and I have talked about this, and we were working on it, 
work more with the parents. Mm -hmm. Parents have to understand their responsibility and how important it is that they do what needs to be done in terms of coaching and teaching and supporting their, their not only their children, but also being available and accessible to uh, the people at the school, the teachers in the classroom, the principals, the superintendents, going to school board meetings, yeah. mm -hmm. being a part you of that. You gotta be activists. You gotta be activists. Yeah. You gotta speak your, your, what you believe and, and let your voice be heard right. in a constructive way. Mental health, another big issue the Urban League has concerns about and is working to do. Scott, give me a little bit of an understanding of what your role is in that. What are you guys trying to um, accomplish? So yeah, Roby, uh, mental health awareness is, is a big focus for us in 2024. We want to make sure that people understand that it's a real deal, right? Coming out of COVID, being uh, you know somewhat kind of confined, a lot of our youth we're seeing challenges. Uh, in terms of how they're responding to really getting re-socialized. And a lot of that is, is, is a mental health awareness factor, stresses, concerns, and issues that folks have. So what we're trying to do at the Urban League is, is really get the word out, make sure that people are very comfortable saying, it's okay, you know, acknowledge, I'm struggling with something, something's frustrating me. And, and talk with someone, you know, reach out. There's so many services that are out there. And so what we're doing at the Urban League is really just trying to get the word out. It's okay, it's fine, address these things. And a lot of times they can make a big difference in folks' are lives. Are you guys kind of a clearinghouse for connecting all of those different resources that are out there? You're not trying to launch any new initiative on, on your own. That's correct, yeah. I've got enough mental health cha challenges personally, <laughs> so therefore I'm looking for as many resources there. That's exactly what we do. In fact, uh, Roby, that's what the Urban League does in most cases. They're tons of support services and opportunities to address issues. So in this mental health space, that's exactly what we're doing. So we've been talking with UAMS, uh, the Lorenzo Lewis Confess Project. There's numerous opportunities out there, counselors at school districts, really just making sure that we get folks A, to, to have that conversation, and then we can direct them to different options. All right, uh, last question here before we wrap up. Uh, Sherman, I'll come to you first on this. You've got a storied career as a businessman in Arkansas too. We don't have time to list all your accomplishments, but there's quite a few of them. Is this economy that we're in right now, is it a good economy? Is it a bad economy? I think this is an economy that has promise, that has uh, opportunities if we figure out how to take advantage of it and work together, uh, the thing that disturbs me and causes me problems right now uh, and, and concern is we don't have the relationship between the community and the local leaders that we had during the height of the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And we got to do that. That's still it's important. It's a lot of us versus them right yeah. now. There doesn't it's, seem to be as much compromise. It's my way uh, wins no. or your way loses. I just I see more of that than I see of what it used to take to yeah. build bridges and bring people together. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I got to wrap it up there. But as always, Sherman Tate, it is good to visit with you. And Scott, one of my longtime friends, it is always good to visit with you as well. I appreciate the work that you all are doing. Keep it up. Let me know what we can do. All right. Roby, thank you for inviting us. Thank All you, right. Roby. We appreciate you. Thank you. We're back with more right after this.